All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna do another update video on my tiny camper, my square drop camper pod, which I'm gonna come back here so you guys can see it in the background. It's coming along nicely. This video is gonna be a quick update to show you what I've completed since the last update and what the plans are going forward. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, so first things first, we have the interior almost completed. All the walls are in, the floor's in. Pardon the mess, I got a lot of tools out right now. But the interior walls are all in, front, back, side to side. Currently, I'm working on ceiling, which I've installed a couple of the lights. I'm missing one board right here. It's gonna have to be cut to a different width than the rest of them. But I wanted to show how I'm doing this. I've got one by four strips placed in here periodically. What I'm doing is I'm same as the walls and same as the floor. I'm filling the gaps with three quarter inch foam board and then going over top of that with uh, whatever the top coat is and the, and the top, it's just one by four pine boards that I'm putting on the, it's not tongue and groove, it looks tongue and groove, but all I'm doing is taking a one by four pine board and run it on the table saw to put a little chamfer on each side. Makes it really easy to do. Cut them all the same length and run a bunch of them through there. It's gonna look good enough for what we wanna do. So I've got receptacles in the front corners, one there, one there. There's going to be a shelf in the front right where the seam of those boards come together, right here where the seam, I'm gonna put a shelf right there all the way across and then we'll decide from there if we want to do anything additional. So here's a good view, the inside. Now I got my fan. This is one of those uh, powered exhaust fans that can blow out or it can blow in. I boxed in some one by fours around it. It has a, a shroud like a trim piece that will go on the inside. I'm not installing that yet until the exterior is finished. And I'm not installing the doors and windows until the exterior is finished. Um, but what I did do in here is uh, add some receptacles in the back as well. And I'm gonna put some small shelves, like corner shelves in each corner so that uh, when we're sleeping in here, so we're, our, our plan is to sleep heads to the back and uh, we'll be able to you know, plug our phones in or, or whatever. If we decide to sleep heads to the front, again, we'll have the shelf up here with receptacles, same thing. I've got lights in the corners, so this set of wires right here is gonna be another light. That set of wires is gonna be another light. That set of wires there is for a porch light. And so is this set of wires. So you might see that I'm actually, my work light is plugged into the inside. So before I walk around the back and show you the power, I've added some exterior lights. Obviously I'll, I'll pull that, uh, sorry, not lights, receptacles. I'll pull that off there before I finish the exterior. But I just wanna show, I've got one of these on each side. And down here, conveniently tucked underneath the rail, we've got just a receiver, waterproof receiver for just a, a regular extension cord. And any of you electricians out there are gonna probably balk at this, but this system comes in here with just a, like an 18 inch extension cord end. So what I've done, and again, I'm, I'm running just a couple of receptacles that are that are the 120 volt. What I've done there is plugged in a, this gray cord comes over, just a surge protector with multiple receptacle plugs on there. And this one goes to the, the two, well, I guess three receptacles that goes to the uh, exterior one and then the two on the inside. And then this plug here goes to this exterior one, and then the two on the driver's side. Uh, additionally, I've added 
this, this transformer here, if anybody's interested in what that is, it just plugs in, you buy it with a, again, a, a 120 volt extension cord end, and then that, that's the, the input on this side. And the output side, it outputs 12 volts DC. I think this one's uh, 150 watts or something like that. But anyway, two wires. And what I did is I fed those two wires to a 12 volt fuse block. And that fuse block is gonna run all of the RV equipment. So RV equipment being the fan and the porch lights and the interior lights. You can see I've wired an additional interior light in the back. It's just kind of hung in there. So that's how we're powering everything. And when I'm off grid, the plan, you know, when I, when I don't have this extension cord and stuff plugged into like a campground power, I'm going to be able to place a battery like down here somewhere with just two simple leads that go up and there'll be additional wires that tie into this fuse block. So if I'm not plugged in to supply power here, I'll be able to supply power via a battery. So, and that's, it's pretty simple to disconnect this transformer because all I've got to do is come over here and unplug this black cord and I can switch to battery power very easily. Uh, I do not have any intentions at this point in putting a, a solar panel uh, with, you know, charging the battery and whatnot. These, these lights are all LED and that fan, I, I'm pretty sure uh, a single charged marine battery will last me a long time. So I'm not too concerned about that. Now onto the plans for the exterior. So the next thing I have to do, I'm gonna walk back over here to my workbench. I purchased this, this wood filler material, interior, exterior. I've got to come in to all of these gaps and fill all of these. So I'm gonna go all the way around the trailer, all the, all the seams, and I'm gonna make sure these are filled in. Here's a good one. We're gonna fill this in, sand it flush, and I'm gonna sand or round off all of the corners on the entire structure, top, bottom, side to side, all the way around, so that I don't have any sharp edges that can easily chip or peel. Um, I don't wanna to have to mess with that stuff once my finish coating is on. Now, the finished coating, I've decided to go ahead and go with the Raptor liner. On the bottom, underneath here, I'm gonna put on a couple coats of like house primer and then probably like a concrete sealer or something like that. This other fellow that I'm cribbing my design off of, that's what he did and he seemed to like it pretty good. My sides, and uh, front and back and top are all gonna get coated with house primer, a couple coats, two, three coats, uh, either rolled on or brushed on, followed by as many coats as I can get of Raptor liner. And that's the, the bed liner material. I'm gonna go with a tintable material that's gonna give this a color so I don't have to paint it or anything like that. So it's gonna actually be uh, orange or gray. We haven't decided. Um, kind of leaning towards orange. I think the orange and the black trailer in my wife's truck is black. Will, will really pop really well. Gonna be a sharp looking rig. And uh, yeah, so after the exterior is on, what I'll be able to do is uh, put on my doors, my windows, my fan, my exterior receptacles, and have everything pretty much completed. Now, the unique part about this trailer is it's actually not a trailer. So the camper pod, you can see if you remember, if you watch my videos, this, this treated four by six on the bottom, there's two of those. The whole structure sits on two four by sixes that are gonna be skids and the intention, this is just sitting on my trailer right now, the intention is to be able to slide this thing off on blocks when I'm not using it and winch it back up onto here when I am using it. So I've got a little bit of uh, work to do in the front end here to give me a winch point. And I'm also, I mentioned this in a previous video, on the rear, I'm gonna add a, a bike rack 
carrier. It's going to be one of those Reese Hitch in this gap right here. One of those uh, Reese Hitch receivers so that my bike rack can go on there. So, yeah, a lot of work to do still. We're, we're getting there. I'm happy with where we're at. Um, like I said, I'm pleased with my progress at this point. I'm three, three weeks into this, I think, right now. And I probably got two to three weeks left of uh, steady, steady work. The coating, final coating the exterior is gonna take some time, I think, to, to let that stuff set and cure. And I think the prep, just like any paint or anything like that, the prep is the is the is where you get your success. So now, just before I let you guys go, let's talk a minute about why I chose to do a camper pod instead of a full-blown trailer. So the purpose of the camper pod is you know when, when I thought about doing this project uh, you know I've considered a camper for a while like a pop-up camper or a small travel trailer uh, we do camp every year we go two to four times and each time is three to five nights something like that so at the maximum four times at five nights a piece is 20 days now there's 365 days in a year for those of you who may have forgot that. So 20 days of camping out of 365 days to me does not justify purchasing a dedicated standalone, you know, uh, rig that's going to cost me $10,000 or more. So right now my budget for this thing is going to be right around $3,000 and Obviously, I built it myself. I kind of know what, what quality level is there. But I'll be able to set this thing off somewhere out of the way. It will be maintenance-free, and it'll be able to sit there while I'm not using it. And, uh, you know, if it takes me 20 minutes or, or a half an hour to winch this thing up onto the trailer and, and get it secured before I'm going to use it, so be it. The, to me, that's far, far worth it. Um, now, if this doesn't work very well, there will be added costs to this project in that I'll have to buy another trailer, right? So if I have another dedicated trailer, if I fabricated it, I figure it would cost me probably another $1,500, probably by the time you buy an axle and um, fabricate the trailer. I think this trailer cost me about $2,700. It's a 3,500 pound axle rated trailer. It's a, it's a really nice trailer. But uh, if I would have to buy another one of those, another $2,700 on top of the 3,000 that I'm gonna spend, now we're pushing $6,000 for the project. So again, still you could get a decent camper for that, you know, a, a travel trailer. But I still think you might be farther ahead uh, having something small, maintenance free. Um, very simple. We don't have any running water in here. We don't have any, you know, uh, there's some electrical, but there, there's nothing to winterize in this, this, uh, trailer at all. So anyway, I'll stop blabbing. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully by the end of this thing, I'll do a very comprehensive walkthrough and show you the finished product. And definitely this summer when we get out in the campgrounds, I'll be able to show you this thing in action. I'm pretty excited to, to see it myself. So appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next video.